We got Ike Villanueva back here on the program. Who's going to be taking on Vinicius Moriere coming up here January 30th, UFC Fight Night. Uh, Ike, how's it going, man? Oh, man, it's going good, man. Excited to finally get back in there. Uh, 2020 was rough for me, man. So, hey, starting the new year with this fight. I'm excited for it, man. Start the year off right. Yeah, and uh, before we get into the fight, uh, you know, we were talking off air. You're uh, working right now during the holidays just to, you know, pick up some extra cash, I'm sure. Uh, how's that going? We see you got the uniform on. Oh, man, it's going good. It's always, it's always good, though. You got to do my part, take care of my family at home. Uh, you know, big thanks to, uh, you know, Hunting Energy Services, always taking care of me, standing by me. And, uh, man, everybody's excited for this fight coming up, man. Big thanks yeah. to uh, Cousins and Mr. Uh, Rick back at Hunting. So, hey, man, I'm excited to get going. Yeah, it's good to see you back. Uh, you mentioned it being kind of a rough 2020, but good learning experience, I'm sure. You know, those last couple of fights, especially the last fight, it was a bit weird with Jordan Wright and the cut and all that. Uh, what did you learn the most in, the, in that last performance against Jordan Wright? Uh, man, you know, that was a hectic week. Uh, I was getting ready to fight George Gonzalez. Uh, they postponed that fight, pushed it back a week, and it turns out the guy tested positive for all kinds of steroids. It was just, man, it was crazy. Then, you know, I went from fighting a brawler to a point striker. And a matter of right when I check into the hotel, being the fighter I am, I wasn't gonna back away from it. Man, I took jumped on the fight. Man, the fight happened, and uh, man, it's, it's part of the game. Man, I, I like to go out on my own shield. Let me go out. It got cut and it happens. Uh, the kid hit the lottery, man. That's the hey, man. Most uh, props to him, man. He but yeah, he got one on me, and uh, I just got to shake it off as a fighter, man. You just got to shake it off and look past that, man. You can't hold it back. Any fighter that dwells on stuff like that, man, it's going to haunt them. You got to shake it off and keep moving forward. I know I haven't shown who I really am, and it's just a matter of time before I finally do that. No, I love the attitude, man. I think that's great. Um, so after that fight, were you worried at all you might not get another another fight because that's two in a row, or did you feel confident the UFC would give you another fight? Man, uh, I got Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis is the best. <laughs> yeah. And- and Jason goes, don't worry about it. He, he told me, he goes, like, this, this kid just hit the lottery. He goes, uh, we'll be back. And, uh, man, I, I got all this trust in Jason, man. I'm, I'm glad I signed with him. He's been, man, um, great to my family. And so I'm very thankful for him. But, yeah, I was confident, man, part of the cut. Hey, uh, man, I got sold up. And right when I got back home, man, um, it was kind of hectic because I just had a newborn baby. That's right. Was, and, uh, as I was driving back from Vegas, uh, my wife went into labor. Right after my fight, I was, it was kind of crazy, but it's a bit of blessing. But I look forward to, you know, getting my next shot against, especially this Brazilian. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, should be a good fight. Uh, a lot of notice by the looks of it, which is great. I uh, just got to get through the holidays, like you said, with work and and you know kids and all that, and probably all the bad food too, because this is uh, going to be at light heavyweight again. Um, I know for the last camp, you went out to Vegas and trained at Extreme Couture. Are you going to be doing that for this camp, or are you just staying at home base? Man, I, I, I would love to, but right now with COVID, man, it's getting crazy. Right. right now. It's, yeah. I mean, uh, my teammate Danny Pineda just went out and fought out there. You know, he's like, man, they're really on lockdown. So uh, the risk is too high right now. So I'll probably have to stick around and get this done here with a uh, uh, crew of Perez down here with my four-hour fight club team down here. So I'll just ride it out. And, man, I get in a good training camp so far. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against your opponent in this fight? Uh, no, he's got some of three losses, three tough losses. He fought some good guys. Uh, but, you know, it's classic, you know, striker versus grappler. He's going for the takedown. And so we're preparing for it. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be a bad night for him. But I just, man, I just got to let go of my hands. I just got to let go, man. I just got to get past that first, this that first storm. Once I get past that first minute of the fight, I got to turn it up and really, you know, show I belong here. And it's like I said, it's do or die, man. It's my game seven here, man. I'm, I'm, my back's against the wall. That's where I perform the best. So I'm excited for it. I've been here before. Now it's time to go and really show I belong here. And I look forward to it. I just want to know where I'm fighting, man. It's going to be Fight Island, Vegas. I don't know yet. So we're waiting. Yeah, it's TBA. I've heard a lot of fighters say that. They're not really sure. I know some of the earlier cards, like the Holloway and Cater card, like McGregor Poirier, it looks like that is going to be Fight Island. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to sort of see uh, in terms of, I mean, at least you're not like a flyweight or bantamweight, like you have to cut a ton of weight to get down, right? So it's, exactly. you know, because that's always a concern when you're traveling a lot, right? So Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Um, you mentioned, you know, sort of, you know, you got to win this fight. Well, same thing with him. He's got three straight losses. And actually, yeah. he, he hasn't fought since uh, August of, uh, or sorry, September of 2019. Yeah. How much do you think the layoff will play in there? Because you've had a couple fights this year. Man, it's, I think it was, it's going to hurt him, man. That, that layoff, then, man, fighting during the COVID time, man, some guys, you know, it, some guys dwell on it. And um, man, I wish the fans were there, man. I'm going to fight it. I feed off the fans. 
And I wish they would be there because, man, when they're not there, it's, man, it's crazy. Yeah. But uh, for him, man, I, I think he's going to be uh, still like, like his first time fighting the UFC all over again because he hasn't fought with no crowd. That's going to be – that's real strange, man. I think a fight with no fans, that uh, benefits the fighters with anxiety. Mm -hmm. All the fighters that have that anxiety, man, that benefits them. Like, the other fighters that, man, we need the crowd, man. We, we feed off that. So, man, I think it'd be hard for them. But, hey, it's a fight game. I got to go knock this guy's head off. You talked about training camp back home. Uh, any, any training partners you know you're going to be working with for this camp? Uh, man, yeah, man. Like, Coach Danny Fernando, he, he brings all the guys. All my brothers that are local here. Uh, I got my eight guys really pushing me. Uh, Main Street Boxing. I got Trey Morrison. Uh, his dad's Tommy Morrison. He's passed away. Uh, but Trey, man, he's been big in helping my boxing game. So uh, Bobby Bitten, all the guys down there at Main Street Boxing, really helping me out. Uh, Nagy Aguilar, all these guys really pushed me. So I'm looking forward to really, you know, showing my hands this fight. Was that the same son that was featured in that documentary about Tommy Morrison? I don't know if you saw that one. I think it was on ESPN, but he looks just yeah. like him. Looks like yes, his dad. Sir. Yes, it's crazy. Wow, man. that's cool. Okay, I didn't know that. I was his dad, and I was like, man, the Duke, man, the Duke is a he's a bad one, man. So, you know, that's kind of – it's an honor to train with his son because I looked up to his dad. His dad was a hell of a fighter. Yeah, good movie too. I love that yeah. uh, Rocky movie as well. So yeah. that, that's sort of what he's you know known for as well, which is kind of yeah. cool. Um, so who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Do you know? Uh, I have uh, Bobby Perez uh, and Daniel Pineda and uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Joseph McCamish. They'll be in my corner uh, for this go-around. Uh, we're just, man, I love to get back to Vegas and train at Extreme Couture with Coach Eric. Man, he dude's a badass, man. I really miss being out there. But, hey, man, I'm going to stick it out and ride my floor on steam out here, and we're going to get it done. Um, how do you see the fight playing out on uh, January 30th? Obviously, you feel like you're going to win, but how do you envision the fight uh, playing out? Uh, it's going to be a little chess game. Come out, I visualize. I got to start off. I got I to touch with my jab a couple times. I got to set my distance. Uh, Really show him how to stand my ground. He's going to look to push me up on the fence. I got to take the center of the cage and I got to stand my ground. But I, I get it past the, probably uh, two minutes in the first round. He's really going to get desperate and try to push me for that takedown. I, I got to counter it. I got to really make him pay. When he comes aside, I got to put my hands in his face and look for the finish. But uh, I've seen my boxing really taking the toll of this fight and. No, well, I'll be victorious with my boxing. What are what are the plans for the holidays? Uh, you mentioned, you know, obviously going to be with your kids and doing the Christmas thing. But uh, you know, I, I guess is everything on lockdown? Like, how how's your holiday looking? Man, no, it's we're going pretty good. I mean, it's, it's, man, things are the same. Man, get my training in, working, train, spend time with the family. My boys in the high school playoffs, man. So that's pretty crazy. Awesome. Right okay, that's cool. High school playoffs, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pato A, Pato Panthers, and make it run the five A state championship. So uh, right now we're in the second round, getting ready for the third. But, man, uh, other than for the holidays, it's my mom's birthday on Christmas. So we'll enjoy that with her. And just me, continue training camp, man. Keep pushing for this fight, man. I look forward to really you know, showing the world who I am, man. So, I can, so they don't want to talk bad about me on Twitter no more. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, Ike, thanks so much for, for doing this. I know you're a super busy guy. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you've got any sponsors or shout-outs, I'll give you the last word. Yes, uh, man, HK44 on Instagram, HK44, uh, yeah, Twitter. Uh, big thanks to the Primo Mix, uh, Takari Laredo, Global Security, Edgar Navarro, man. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate everything you do for me. Uh, Offshore CNC, man, it's Chris Walker, man. Appreciate him. Everybody at Hunting, uh, pretty much, man, that's about it, man. Everybody stays down with Team Hurricane, man. Thank you very much, and I look forward to putting on the show January 30th. 